Hello, it's me, Eric, and I'm going to talk to you about things today. I'm so excited to do so. Before I do, I'm going to say really quickly, like, subscribe, do that quick. So I was born and raised in the Kansas City metropolitan area, uh, which is a kind of a fancy way of saying that like many cities, there's a lot of suburbs around Kansas City and a lot of small towns outside of those suburbs that still kind of get um, pulled into the under the blanket of Kansas City. Uh, so that's where I've spent most of my time. But I did, however, spend about five years living in Springfield, Missouri. And uh, for all of the faults that that city has, it does have some. Um, a pretty impressive meth problem is maybe the cheapest of Springfield's problems. Uh, but besides that, um, I'm very, very fond of the city. I loved it when I was there. I uh, built a lot of, made a lot of great memories there, etc., etc., etc. That's not why you're here, though. That's not why I lured you in. Um, I lured you into this video to give you an unhelpful guide to Springfield. What's going to happen is um, I'm recording this on a Wednesday. On Friday, this coming Friday, I'm going to drive the three and a half hours or whatever to Springfield in the morning. I'm going to do a handful of fun nostalgic things because um, it's been a while since I've been in Springfield. I'm going to meet some friends for dinner and drinks and then I'm going to drive back to Kansas City um, that evening. I'm doing that because I want to get into, I'm hoping, this is like a proof of concept because I really want to believe that it's worthwhile to drive back and forth in a day, save hotel costs. I'm hoping that'll make it to where I'm more likely to go back to the city that I am so fond of. But anyway, once again, that's not why you're here. You're here, presumably, for some reason, to hear me talk about Springfield. So I've got a list of seven things that, just off the top of my head, I'm very fond of or, or thought was worth mentioning about Springfield. On Friday, when I drive, I'm gonna go to all of these spots and uh, talk about them and whatnot. Enough of all of this, and here comes my first Springfield destination. Pretend there's like a cool effect and an awesome animated graphic when I say number one. The Japanese Stroll Garden. This place is so beautiful. I The common rule is to save the best for last, but I think that if you've been to the Stroll Garden, then you know I'm probably starting with the best. Uh, although the number seven is also really, really great. I was under the impression that I was living in Springfield when the Stroll Garden was built, but according to their website, it was built in 1985. So I'm wondering if maybe it was... Uh, rechristened do you rechristen a park like you might a ship uh i think it was maybe like rechristened or something when i was living there uh because i remember like there being like a big special event times but i don't know maybe not maybe it was just my first year there so it was new to me who knows either way it's beautiful um i'm looking at the website again uh, it's 7.5 acres uh includes a large koi pond moon bridge meditation garden tea house and traditional japanese garden landscaping the website here at least the little bit that i'm looking at doesn't talk about springfield sister city but springfield has a sister city in japan and as i recall um representatives from said sister city there's a tongue twister for you uh came to help um design the garden but i might be making that up uh but that's kind of the beauty of this video is i can say whatever i want and uh, unless you know better you have to take it uh, for truth but anyway if you go to springfield um it's very cheap to go I uh, will probably just insert a little image here of the prices and uh, you should check it out. Number two, this big fork. I refuse to look up information about it. It's just a thing that is here inexplicably. Number three, A5. I'm going to try not to dox the residents of this place, but uh, this is an apartment building that I lived in. When I lived in Springfield, I lived in three different units here. A5 was the very best. Uh, A5 was known for its grand parties. 
uh, video game parties, classy parties, mult, many, many, many theme parties. Uh, it was a um, haven for local artists and eccentrics. Uh, my good friend who I would love to name, but I just don't know if he would necessarily want his name associated with my stupid videos. But uh, a friend of mine who's in film uh, named a production company after this unit that we all lived in together at one point. And yeah, it's not going to help you, but this is a highlight of Springfield that if you know about it, I guess you know about it. I'm jumping in in the middle of all of this stuff to give an honorable mention to the Battlefield Mall in Springfield. It didn't make my initial list, uh, even though it's one of my favorite spots in Springfield. I'm like a lifelong mall rat. Uh, I worked at that mall. I worked at the Hot Topic. My third tour at Hot Topic um, was at that mall. It's great. It's interesting. To me, it's interesting that mall. I have family in Arkansas. That's like three hours away from them, I think, or thereabouts. And I've heard of them like driving to Springfield Mall to shop. Uh, so it's a long distance, but from where they live in the middle of nowhere, um, they don't have, that's the closest mall to them. So I think it's kind of interesting as malls slowly die across the country um, and Battlefield Mall isn't the most um, extravagant mall I've ever been to, but it services, I think, a larger um area than a lot of malls, certainly the malls here um, in Kansas City. So even though they didn't make my official list, I wanted to have seven places. Um, so I didn't want there to be eight. So now this is just a little honorable mention in the begin in the middle. So all right, back to the list. Number four. So look, the tunnels are awesome. If you've been in them, you know that. However, I can't say that they're not dangerous and they're almost certainly illegal. So I'm not going to talk about them any more than this. If you find them, if you know where this place is, just stay out, okay? Just stay out. Unless you have... No, no, there's no one less. As far as I'm concerned, you should stay out of them. This is kind of a... This is kind of a if you know, you know situation. As well as a kind of wasting your time situation. <laughs> Number five. The square. Now the square looks like this, but I'm gonna try to find a picture of what the square used to look like. When I moved to Springfield, it was just a big patch of grass in the downtown area. It was fun though. It was definitely like, this was before the downtown was quite as robust as it is now. Um, people that live in big cities are gonna laugh at me calling Springfield's downtown robust, but it's a nice little scene. Uh, I wanted to make a note of in the square in yesteryears, uh, Springfield used to be known for vampire role play. And it's not the kind of vampire role play that my friends and I occasionally do with these books and dice. This were like, you know, people would go down there and um, supposedly many of them really believed they were vampires. Maybe they were. I've I didn't meet them, so I don't know. Uh, maybe they were. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Moving on. Number six, Maria's, possibly the best Mexican restaurant I've ever eaten at. Uh, this is where it used to be. It is closed. This is, you'll recall, a fairly unhelpful guide to Springfield. Uh, now I would recommend my second favorite restaurant, which happens to be a chain, Salito Lindo. Um, it's a Real, like, native Springfieldians will probably tell you that uh, Mexican Villa or Mexican Villa, you'll often hear incorrectly. That's where they'll tell you to go. Um, and actually, you know, most Springfield residents will just tell you to go get cashew chicken somewhere. Springfield has more Chinese restaurants than it knows what to do with. But um, yeah, Maria's, it was great. It was a very unique thing and it's gone and I miss it. But if you can somehow managed to alter time and space you should go eat there number seven a place that thankfully still exists the mud lounge uh this is the best this is the kind of thing that if you take somebody to springfield and they're not having a fun they're not having a fun they're not having fun doing anything else they'll certainly have fun at the mud lounge and they're great and it's kind of the classy springfield has a lot of bars um, when I lived there, most of the bars were kind of trashy, and I say that with love. Um, sometimes you need a trashy bar, but the Mud Lounge was always a little bit nicer. 
So I'm back from Springfield. I had just a terrific time in Springfield for the like 18 hours or whatever I was there. I really do love Springfield. Um, I hope that no one who's from Springfield will watch this video and think that I'm attacking or anything like that. I'm not. I'm legitimately in love with that city. I kind of think of it as home, even though I only lived there for four or five years. I loved this kiwi strawberry pineapple whip that I had. I miss the grape flavor, but anyway, Emerald City, I miss you. Um, I love you. I can't wait until we meet again. And if you've never been, you should go check it out. And I think that's it. All right.